I'm very happy to be here and uh, glad that I'm the first speaker so I get it over with. Um, <coughs> this this uh, topic is called, uh, hang on a second, I just want to make sure this, this topic is called, I can't, I guess that you just click it to, yeah. use arrows over there. Wait, okay, I got it, I got it. Okay, I got it, I got it. Okay. Oh, okay. Um, this, I, this topic is called uh, Notes from the 1996 Survey of Jewish Heritage in Slovenia, which I carried out that year in September. Looking around, I, I don't think there's anyone here, maybe Ivica, but I'm not sure about that, that I knew when I carried out this survey. I don't think I even had met Rudy at that point. Uh, we did? We met once. In Saga. In Saga. Okay. So <laughs> Rudy, maybe Ivica. But otherwise, nobody else here did I know, and there was almost nobody else doing much about Jewish heritage in Slovenia at that point. Um, all, almost all uh, Jewish heritage work, rediscovery, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, particularly in the 1990s, had a political basis, cultural and political basis, in the aftermath of the um, fall of communism and, in the case of Yugoslavia, the separation of the country. And uh, this survey in Slovenia uh, was no different from that. And what I've done actually is bring my notes. This is this is a this is a the cover of the survey, which I have here, and it's online. Uh, I carried it out in 1996 and then updated it. In the, after visits to Slovenia in 1998 and 2003, and this version was published in 2005. And at the time, it was the the broadest survey of Jewish heritage uh, in Slovenia. Uh, it came about as a result of a political and cultural agreement signed between the U.S. government and the Slovene government. And this is the, um, it was the U.S. Commission for the Preservation of America's Heritage Abroad, which was set up in 1985. You can read what it was set up for. And it was in the process of signing <coughs> agreements with various countries uh, to preserve the heritage of um, Americans, the, the, the ancestors of Americans who had immigrated to America. Uh, and, and this basically, in the, in the aftermath of the Holocaust and communism, was the heritage of Jews. It focused a lot on Jewish cemeteries and the remaining Jewish, other Jewish heritage sites. And a series of surveys began to be carried out in the 1990s. Uh, Czech Republic, Poland, uh, Ukraine, there's also Moldova, Lithuania, and Slovenia was one of them. After the signing of a bi bilateral agreement, and this is the text of the agreement, signing this bilateral agreement between the United States and Slovenia. And you can see it's long, but I can, if you want copies of it, I can get you copies of it. And it was signed, it looks like by Al Gore, and I can't read who it was who signed from uh, Slovenia. And it was signed May 8th, 1996. In the wake of this, the governments put together a project that a representative of the U.S. Commission would go to Slovenia and carry out a survey of existing Jewish heritage sites um, with the aid and cooperation of, this, of the Slovenian uh, culture ministry. And so I, engaged, I was the person chosen to do this, and um, I engaged in a lengthy correspondence with people from the culture ministry who laid out, you know, they sent me lots of documentation, including this long documentation about the status of the uh, beginning of the restoration of the synagogue in Maribor, its state in 1992, its plans for 1994. There are a lot of drawings here, uh, description in, several, in two or three languages. You can take a look at it later if you want to see what things were like 25, 30 years ago. And um, we decided, they, the, 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 culture, the culture ministry uh, designated someone to help me to set up the itinerary, and we set up this trip. And uh, at, the, at that point, 
we knew that, or I had written them through research and all of that, that the sites that um, I was aware of were the, the, the cemetery in Novogorica, uh, the sites in Maribor, in Ljubljana, the street names, in Ptui, I say former synagogue, there were residents, Landava, I, I mentioned cemetery but not synagogue, Murska Sorbota Cemetery, and at one time there was a synagogue in Pira and the Ghetto. That was what I was aware of before going on this trip. So they set me up an itinerary, which is this. Since I don't throw anything away, I have these notes. And this is where we went. This is a day-by-day -day, uh, tour that we took. And as I remember, we tried to stay in very nice places and have very good food as well. And we went to all these sites, met with local heritage experts and all that, and in uh, Ljubljana also with uh, the then director of the uh, Jewish community, the late Mladen Schwartz. And, you know, I took pictures, I described the sites. This is what the interior of Landava looked like in 1996, the synagogue. This is what it looked like in 2003, I think. Uh, this is what Landava Synagogue looked on the outside in 1996. There was also the standing the Jewish school, which eventually was torn down. That, that theater by Markovets wasn't built yet. This is what the uh, synagogue in Maribor looked like. This is what it looked like on the inside. There was work going on, but as we, um, as we were told, in the lower picture you can just see they had put a sort of women's gallery around, which uh, they thought it would be, it should go there. But then they, they had to take it down because they realized that it was incorrect. It was a modern invention. And then there was follow-up. After this was published, there was a follow-up one year later, where there was a meeting of this joint heritage commission from the Slovene and US side. We had this agenda. We met in. Um, October 1997 in Ljubljana and we talked about the implementation of the agreement that we had signed, uh, the compilation of the most significant Jewish monuments which were then public, which had already been published in this report, marking, they, they agreed that they were going to mark these sites um, and then there were other means that they should take to, other, other things that they should do to undertake the, the renovation, revitalization, or protection of these sites, and then discussions and decisions regarding the future work of the commission, this joint commission. And that included publishing my report as a, a guidebook, as part of a series of guidebooks um, about cultural heritage in Slovenia. Because this is the time when the Slovenes, newly independent, were trying to establish themselves as an independent state, independent identity, and were looking back at the past to, to do that. This, was, this meeting that we had was followed up by a two-day international symposium on medieval Jewish communities in Central Europe and their cultural heritage, and this took place in Maribor. And what I want to do now is something that I rarely do, is to read something, because I, I wrote something about this conference, and to me it, it sort of embodied what was going on in Slovenia at that time. And times have changed since then, it's more than 20 years later. But let me read you this. I think I have the time to, just to do it. And, and I think it's a good start for conversation about what has happened since then, what has taken place, how attitudes have changed, and, uh, and all of that. So I call this a strange little ceremony. I attended a strange little ceremony in Maribor. It centered on the symbolism inherent in an 800-year-old building that once was a synagogue, and how that symbolism, and the symbolism of Jews, was perceived and used by both individuals and civic authorities in a newly independent post-communist country trying to define its identity. It also entailed new relations between emerging Jewish communities and mainstream societies, as well as the, as well as the ways in which outside Jewish interests interacted with local conditions. The ceremony, the ceremony was held to affix a mezuzah on the doorpost of Maribor's medieval synagogue, a full 500 years after the Jews were expelled from Maribor and for most of the rest of what today is Slovenia. The country with a population of 2 million became independent in 1991 after it seceded from Yugoslavia, touching off the Balkan Wars of the 1990s. It marked the first time in history that Slovenes had formed an independent state. 
The Mardi Gras synagogue dates back to the 13th century and is one of the oldest buildings in what is a charming university town, Slovenia's second largest city. It is thus one of the oldest buildings in Slovenia. The much rebuilt structure sits amid the site of the old Jewish quarter, an area just inside the town walls above the Drava River, which for years was run down and neglected, but which even during the communist period was known as Jewish Street. Jews flourished in Maribor in the Middle Ages, and Maribor rabbi Israel Isselein was renowned throughout Central Europe in the 15th century. But Jews were expelled from Maribor in 1497, and few Jews have lived in the city since then. Already in 1501, the synagogue had been turned into a church. In the 19th century, it was used as a warehouse, and later it was converted into a dwelling. By 1997, there had not been an organized Jewish community in Maribor in 500 years. Renovation work got underway on the building, which is owned by the city, in the 1990s. Factions within the municipal administration, however, clashed over what use should be made of the structure. Some wanted to see it converted into a youth center or even a pub or discotheque that would anchor commercial and touristic development of the surrounding old quarter. Others wanted it for use by the city as an archives. Others insisted that the building be restored as closely as possible to its original appearance and be used for a more dignified cultural purpose that underscored its original Jewish religious identity. By 1997, it seemed clear that the synagogue would ultimately be restored as a culture center that would include an exhibit and information on local Jewish history. Restor restoration would be of European importance too, as it is one of the few medieval synagogues still known to be standing in Europe. But practical as well as political problems also dogged the project. City monuments authorities said they wanted to restore the building according to what they believed was its original appearance, but this was impossible to determine. Some of the initial work was carried out hurriedly and incorrectly in accordance to local, uninformed ideas of what was Jewish and how a synagogue should look, and was going to have to be removed. This included a women's gallery installed as a partial upper floor in the sanctuary. By 1997, there was still little idea as to what the final form and function of the building would be, nor was a program of activities or plan for exhibition space drawn up. Lack of funds was another problem, work on the building seemed stalled. The mezuzah, however, was nailed to the synagogue doorpost during a small ceremony that followed a two-day international symposium. Sponsored by the city of Maribor, the University of Maribor and the Maribor Regional Archives, the symposium was the first full-scale international conference on a Jewish topic to be held in the town and was considered a prestigious event. Slovenia's president, Maribor's mayor, and other Slovenian dignitaries as well as the U.S. Ambassador, a representative of the Israeli Ambassador, and the Secretary General of the Council of Europe attended the opening ceremony. Scholars and experts from Slovenia, Israel, Italy, Germany, Austria, Hungary, and the United States presented papers. Neither the symposium nor the synagogue restoration had anything much to do with Jews per se. Few of the participants in the symposium were Jewish, and the fact that the symposium opened on the second night of the Jewish holiday of Sukkot caused at least one scheduled Jewish speaker to cancel his participation. The events instead had to do with Slovenians and their perception of Jews as symbols and of their drive to foster a sense of specific national history for the newly independent country. Quote, after we became independent, Slovenians began to pay attention to their own history. Um, Pavo, uh, Petro Pavo Klasinc, who served as deputy mayor of Maribor in the mid-1990s, told me. He spearheaded the move to ensure that the synagogue's original Jewish character would be recognized in any restoration and was one of the organizers of the symposium. Uh, he said, before the independence, our identity was subordinated as a part of Yugoslavia. Now we are on our own. In the past, Jews played an important role here, particularly in Maribor. We realize now that this is part of our national history. A survey of Jewish monuments in Slovenia, which I had carried out a year earlier, served the same end. Slovenia is a relatively small country with a very picturesque history, the director of the cultural office of Slovenia told me at the time. Slovenia was always multicultural, so it is therefore interested in all cultural, material, and humanistic traces. The mezuzah that we put did not come from, from Slovenia, however. It was brought to Maribor by a Washington-based lawyer named Mark Cohen, 
who had taught law at Maribor University several years earlier and was associated with the US Commission. Cohen attached it to the doorpost of the synagogue and blessings were recited. The first time a Jewish religious symbol was associated with a building in half a millennium. Then the mezuzah was taken down. Cohen said, it's just temporary and symbolic for now as the synagogue is currently undergoing restoration but we hope that when the work is complete, it will be affixed here permanently. No rabbi was in attendance. At the time, there was none in Slovenia. Instead, Geza Komorozzi, a Hungarian Judaica scholar who had attended the symposium, recited blessings in Hebrew. Komorozzi, who heads the center, headed the Center for Jewish Studies, set up at the Hungarian Academy of Science in 1988, looks like a classic Jewish sage with a long flowing beard, but he's not Jewish. During the meals provided at the symposium, however, he was one of the few to choose prepackaged kosher food. He did so, he told me, to demonstrate, quote, warm sympathy for the Jewish people. Also taking part in the ceremony was Vladimir Schwartz, at the time the coordinator of the Slovene Jewish community. Then an unstructured organization which numbered less than 100 people and carried out almost no religious or social communal function. Like almost all Jews in Slovenia, Svarch was secular and assimilated, and his family roots were not local. In the name of the Jewish community of Slovenia, he said, I want to express thanks that we have lived to see this day, and that we will work together in the city of Maribor and all people who are trying to preserve this synagogue as a living monument. We will cooperate in the future so that this will be a living memorial to Slo Slovenian Jews. Svartz was ousted from his position not long afterwards. Two and a half years after the conference and the mezuzah ceremony, most of the outer restoration work on the synagogue had been completed, but it still had no exhibit inside, nor had a final plan been decided. That means in 1999. It wasn't clear if finances or local interest had failed. In the meantime, a rabbi had taken up a part-time post in Slovenia, and religious sensibilities had begun to revive. Local Jewish leaders were insisting that final restoration of the synagogue must now include a prayer room. In May of 2000, Bulgarian Jewish leaders promised to provide a Torah. I think this passage, which I wrote, I think, in 1999, encapsulates a lot of the issues that were then at stake and going on, and from which much of the scholarship and much of the work on Jewish heritage that's gone on in the next 20 years has, 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 has either abolished or has deepened. It laid the groundwork and shows the, both the political and cultural and social and emotional um, aspects of Jewish heritage, and particularly that synagogue. But again, that was only one of the places that I visited on this um, tour around the country. And I'd be happy to show anybody the notes, the, the questions, the comments that Mark Cohen had brought to, to all of this, because I have this documentation here. Um, the guidebook was never published. That was supposed to be published for, of my work. Um, and I myself, I don't think this joint commission ever had another meeting. And I myself have simply been enjoying Slovenia and doing a little bit of documentation for my other books, um, but nothing in depth any, anymore in the country although I go to Slovenia quite frequently. Anyway, I think that's 20 minutes, right? Perfect. So um, I look forward to hearing you know, the scholarship that's being done and, and the, the, the more in-depth uh, work. But I, I think that this background is important because it's the, it's the bedrock on which, it's the like, fluid bedrock, the lava, the, 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 the ocean, on which so much work that's gone on since then has had has has had to has had to be based on and sink its foundation into this very fluid, very complex and undefined structure. Thank you. And if anybody wants uh, there are a few brochures for Jewish Heritage Europe, the website that I run, if you want to pick them up.